Hey, senpai, don't get up yet. I thought we're done with the deck tech. Didn't you make a competitive list for Lore of the Nazgul? I did. Can you talk about it for five minutes? I don't have a script, but sure. I can talk about a deck for five minutes. Hey, everyone. Today we have a deck tech for Lord of the Nazgul, except it's for competitive commander, which makes a whole lot more sense to me than casual. So Lord of the Nazgul is a five mana commander that makes three, three wraiths per instant or sorcery cast. A lot of you are probably wondering how this commander can be played at this power level. Some of you might say five mana is too much for a commander, but we know Tivit has been doing well and we know white has nothing to do with castability here. Being a 3 blue-black commander means that we can use Mana Vault and Grim Monolith or even just Ritual Spells to easily power out the commander. Another unique thing about the commander is the wraiths we generate can be leveraged as a resource for cards like Moonsnare Prototype or Springleaf Drum to not fall behind on mana compared to higher color decks. And while being in the blue and black color identity opens you up to simple standard win cons like Ad Nauseam or Thassa's Oracle, Talk slower, um, I won't be able to edit this that fast. Eh, they'll keep up. Lord of the Nazgul is basically a single package threat that can close the game with time. If you wanted a blue-black deck that plays Ad Nauseam or Thassa's Oracle combos, you probably just add red and play a deck that's more suited towards it. If we're looking at Lord of the Nazgul, in a way it's very similar to Nimrus. Nimrus tacks on a consider so your spells have better tempo because they're one more mana's worth of effect added on. But Lord of the Nazgul provides an alternate form of advantage. Lord of the Nazgul makes 3-3 three, three menace wraiths per instant or sorcery cast. Let's just forget about the 9-9 nine, nine clause for a second. If you get one click in on your opponents, you've dealt one lightning bolt's worth of damage. While the damage isn't as direct as actually dealing a lightning bolt per instant cast, you also have to consider the factor of time, which is the most important advantage Lord of the Nazgul has over other commanders. Here, time means more damage. Each click the Wraith gets in, you get another bolt's worth of damage. In a few turns, your free spell on turn 2 might have came with 3 lightning bolts for free, which is a pretty good rate. If you know about the old philosophy of fire article, decks on the beatdown can place evaluations on their creatures to know how many bolts worth of damage they are. If removing a creature allows you to get another click in, then that direct damage spell was actually positive on its effect. If we apply a similar line of thought, your git probes and counter spells can have that evaluation now as well. Designer, are you following any of this? No. Senpai never you know, talks I can hear to you staffs too. except for competitive card games and ordering a sandwich at Susway. Can we talk about this later? Designer, you eat at Susway too. Now Don't forget to cut right this out, video. To be talking about our sandwich order, rookie. So I mentioned time earlier. Lord of the Nazgul lets you leverage time better, because while Nimrus uses time to assemble an A plus B, Lord of the Nazgul translates time to combat damage. And other decks that uses time very well are stacks decks. Because we don't have red, we can play tempo positive cards like Torpor Orb to hit Dockside, Weathered Runestone to hit Breach, and Dampening Sphere to hit the Nas decks. These are efficient stacks pieces to buy us more time so our tokens can get more hits in. The problem with stacks decks is they need to dedicate card slots to close the game, even with Nota, because they need to play low value creatures to convert themselves into high value creatures. Lord of the Nazgul is different because our deck can be built with permanent base control, then stack interaction that also doubles up as our way to close the game neatly with the time we buy in the deck. So the last thing on the note of time. I want to try cards like Capture of Jingzo or Turn Effects because while other decks leverage those effects to either get more mana to push through a win or accrue advantage to position themselves better, Turn Effects for us just equates to more damage. The card itself, in a very similar way to how it's used in Paco and Holden, just translates the damage much better, especially if we can get our race to be 9-9s. Some other cards we're playing here are back to basics, because we're not on a tainted pack mana base and we're low color. We're also playing Winter Orb because our spells are cheap, and once we have Wraiths on board, again, time helps us get there. We also have Opposition as a way to lock down the table with each Wraith we create. 
especially when comboed with Winter Orb. One more note I'll add is I added in a Dark Blast as a way to reliably get more cast triggers once Lord of the Nazgul is online. And it's a consistent answer to Orcish Bowmaster or other one-drop cards like Esper Sentinel or Dorks. So that's the deck. I left the Moxio link below. Tell them about the Nimrus deck tech. We didn't make those. Just do it. Oh. Uh, if you want to learn more about Blue Black Control and Tempo, you should watch the Nimrus video. Should we plug the store?